Hello, and welcome to this video. My name is Brandon Becker, Product Line Manager of Industrial Wide Band Gap at On Semiconductor. Today, I'm going to share with you an overview of wide band gap capabilities focusing on silicon carbide, SIC for short. Silicon for power devices is running out of steam. An easy way to visualize this is to imagine a Toyota Corolla. The Toyota Corolla is in its 10th generation, but what is new? A few features inside and outside have been modified, changed, or enhanced over the years, but in the end, you get the same traditional performance you would expect. This is an example of how we can relate traditional silicon devices, such as superjunction MOSFETs and IGBT transistors, to a common car like a Toyota Corolla. Why band gap is truly the next generation for power electronics. I like to describe wide band gap products as the supercars that everyone fantasizes over. Everything is new, from manufacturing supply chain to operating the devices themselves. Given these new products, it gives engineers the ability to design cutting edge technology that will make our planet greener, more efficient, and less wasteful. In the end, it primarily comes down to speed. The speed we can switch these devices is directly proportional to the losses in a system. This translates to how efficient we can convert power from an AC to DC, DC to DC, or DC to AC system. In the left hand corner is a superjunction MOSFET that has a lot of loss and QRR rating of 1000 nanocoulombs. The picture on the right has basically no loss and a QRR rating of 100 nanocoulombs. Overall, the difference is 30 times lower QG than the best in-class superjunction MOSFETs, 25 times lower QRR, 60 times lower figure of merit, and switching frequencies that go into the megahertz. At this point, you might be thinking, wonderful, but why do you call this wide band gap? The definition of wide band gap is the energy required to move an electron from its outer shell so it can move freely inside material. You can see the table on the left shows the band gap energy each material contains. Now if you compare silicon to silicon carbide, SIC or gallium nitride GAN, you can see where the name wide band gap comes from. From here I'll focus on the benefits of SIC. SIC has 10 times higher dielectric breakdown field strength, 2 times higher electron saturation velocity, 3 times higher energy band gap, three times thermal conductivity. The way SIC is manufactured is by simply putting sand and coal into a reactor. Through electrical and heating processes, over the course of a few days, a boule of silicon carbide is grown in a chamber. When fully completed, the boules are four to six inches in diameter and a few inches long. The challenges include cost, capacity for a large volume scale, and the elimination of defects in the silicon carbide substrates. On Semiconductor is committed to growing their own substrates, which will then in turn solve many of the challenges we face today. After the remaining manufacturing steps are completed, what can we now expect from these silicon carbide devices? Let's take a look at comparing a 60 milliohm silicon carbide MOSFET to a 60 milliohm superjunction MOSFET. First, the die size. You can see at the top of this slide the die size of the silicon carbide MOSFET is much, much smaller than the superjunction MOSFET for the same RDSON value. Second, we get a bunch of system benefits, including high efficiency by low power losses, high power density, high frequency operation, high temperature operation. Which leads to number three, application benefits. If you take a look at the table on the left, which are the material properties, you can see the effects of this on a device level, high voltage, low RSPs, low switching losses. The effects on a system, high frequency plus smaller passives, fewer cooling needs to go into the system. And the effects on the end application or at a system level include smaller size, lighter weight, higher efficiency, and cost benefits throughout. Another motivation for using silicon carbide MOSFETs in power applications is the properties of ideal switching. Remember how it was all about speed earlier? Well, an ideal switch means one, zero leakage in the off state, two, zero voltage in the on state, 
and three, zero switching losses. Now here's another comparison of how the two most important specs of a MOSFET compare. If we keep the breakdown voltage constant across different devices at 1200 volts, we want to compare the RDS on or RSP area and the switching losses. If we take a silicon carbide MOSFET as the baseline, then a silicon MOSFET is 100 times bigger in RDS on area and three to five times lossier. For a silicon IGBT, the area is three to five times bigger while the switching losses are 10 times more. You can see that silicon carbide MOSFETs are approaching an ideal switch. They have the best combination of low RDS on and low switching loss for high voltages, basically greater than 600 volts. This slide shows the key performance parameters that we want for silicon carbide devices. Starting with the silicon carbide diodes, it provides no reverse recovery, reduced switching losses, higher operation junction temperature, temperature independent switching behavior, meaning as your system heats up, the performance of the devices themselves don't change. On the other hand, silicon carbide MOSFETs provide very fast switching speeds, getting very close to an ideal switch, as we just talked about, less temperature dependence, lower RDS on at high temperatures, and higher switching frequency for power density improvements. This will allow systems to become smaller, greener, and more efficient, which is good for the environment. Now that we've gone through what silicon carbide is, how it's manufactured, some of the benefits that go along with that, let's take a look at On Semiconductor's portfolio. We have a very large portfolio that range from diodes to MOSFETs. Our diodes include 650 volt and 1200 volt through hole, surface mount, die, and modules. Our MOSFETs are released at 1200 volts with 900 volts and 650 volts coming in the near future. All of our products have high level of quality and reliability, which include undergoing AECQ 101 testing. Next, we're gonna talk about some of our focus markets and what's driving those markets. For the industrial, the three biggest markets are solar, electrical vehicle charging stations, and power supplies. Over a series of videos, we're gonna go in depth to the versatility of silicon carbide and how it affects all these markets. To date, On Semiconductor has over six trillion of field hours on silicon carbide devices across all these market segments. Thank you for tuning into this overview about wide band gap and specifically silicon carbide. If you want to learn more about any of these markets, please tune in to the next series of videos that will cover in depth each of these markets. And if you are interested in any of these products, please visit us at onsemi.com.